the older you get, the more you learn, the more you've read, and the more nonsense you hear, and a lot of, and also a lot of good things. I want to tell you a story while we're looking at these horses. Uh, you can see on one of the horses there's a white bird, and they are called the cattle bird. And these cattle birds live very much together with the horses. Uh, as soon as the horses walk, uh, the, 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 there are animals, uh, insects jumping away from uh, from the hoof of the horses. And then you can see these cattle birds uh, finding these insects. So there is a symbiosis uh, in between the horses and this bird. And <laughs> I have to say, uh, first I was a little bit amazed. What's that white stuff on, on, you can see the cattle birds flying. What's the white stuff on the back of the, the mare there? Many mares. And I was a little bit worried because was it a disease? And well, you can imagine it's the poo of the cattle bird. Anyway, we're doing observation and my task here was to film um, one horse during as long as possible. Uh, as you can see, they wear GPS. And so the professor, which um, um, where I was, was part of, can use these movies and so they can check where the horses are, which is a very fascinating um, project, I think. What you can also see is that they have numbers. The mares have the numbers on their shoulder, the left, and the stallions have the, the males, I have to say, have the numbers on the um, shoulder on the right. But let me tell you a small story. Um, when I was starting my, my, my interest in horses, and that happened a long time ago, <laughs> I remember that um, um, I was part of a group of ponies. My parents didn't buy me a pony for myself, so I had to go find uh, places to observe. And actually, that was the main thing I wanted. I wanted to get to know these animals. I wanted to look at them, just look at them. And like, I'm very happy with these movies because now I see a lot of more behavior compared to the moment that I was standing there and filming. Anyway, so I found uh, a group of ponies and I think I was about 10 years of age or so. I was very young and I could uh, take my bicycle and go there. In the Netherlands, we use bicycles. <laughs> You can see the full peeing. Anyway, um, you can see, you can watch the horses. And I was focusing on this mare. And she looks pretty skinny, I agree. I completely agree. Um, it's September, so the horses are, um, well, the foals are, are growing. Oh, you can see the white bird poo also. Anyway, let's go back to the ponies. And I remember that, that um, later on, I was a little bit older, um, there was somebody talking about lead mare, alpha mare. And there was this one mare who was the highest in ranking and who, who let everybody else do what she wanted. And I remembered that when I was with the ponies, I was a little bit disappointed because when I looked at television and there wasn't a lot of movies about uh, horses in the wild, there were only those Western horses uh, from Hollywood who you can hear um, shout all the time. And I already knew as a child, well, this is nonsense. They don't... Horses do make sounds, but not all the time. Well, cowboy comes, whoa! Anyway, you will know the Hollywood uh, stuff, and, and which definitely doesn't teach you anything about horses. So, there was this, this, this theory about this alpha mare. And the pony I chose as my favorite one was, of course, <laughs> the tallest, the strongest, uh, the biggest. Uh, and, and she was ridden, and she was a very... I, th I still call her a queen. I mean, the older the mares get, the more foals they have, and the more they become uh, very mature and very wise. Anyway, her name was Sonia, and, and she um, defended her foal always with so much devotion. I admired that. Anyway, never mind. But I read these theories about this alpha mare who was supposed to lead and to guide, and, and this stallion. Um, who was also always walking at the back and etc etc and I was disappointed at the ponies because they had a mare and they had a stallion but there was nothing of, of that behavior at all it was more they were just being together and it seemed that nobody really cared about what the other one did um, only when there was uh, too much struggle in between foals you could see one of the mares uh, lift up her head like 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 get out and oh and then the foals were were were, were I call it laughing um, 
they were laughing and, and oh dear my aunt is getting a little bit confused so let's get out of the way and that was actually all the behavior i saw and the foals were playing but the mares didn't play and of course the, the stallion who walked in that group was only doing um interested in some something else he was only sexual interested in, in certain time of the year what I liked uh, a lot about these ponies is that they did, never had fights. There were no real fights. You never saw uh, horses, ponies fight amongst each other. I could see grooming, I could see affiliative uh, behavior, and I could see a lot more. Um, but mainly they were grazing, and like these horses uh, at this moment, they're standing in the water, they're standing in a pond. Um, but I didn't see that action that, that was promised in the books. Oh, you can see this and you can see that. Now, the funny thing is, it's years later, I'm a little bit older now. <laughs> um, I'm over 50, yes. Um, now I learned more and I, I discovered more and I, I was very critical always. And I look more and more and more and more and more. Now, um, on my last journey, um, I was at the company uh, of several scientists. And I really had to laugh over it because they said, well, you know, People, this theory of, um, well, let's call, mention the name, Monty Roberts, of this alpha mare who's, who's putting a, a filly foal out of the out of the group and then come back and blah, blah, blah. Probably you know the story. Um, it's fake. Because, for instance, Lucy Rees, and, and, and she studied 50 years of horses or, or something, and she said, we never saw that. Um, there is no alpha mare. There is ranking, and you can see that that some horses walk away for 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 a certain mare, but that's not that mare is not uh, doing all these things that that according to the books. So, and I tend to call it uh, Disney horsemanship. I mean, when I look at, at the Lion King, you can see all kinds of animals being friends and talking and singing and having a lot of fun. Well, reality. Uh, I have to admit that, that when I first saw the wild horses, that the first days I was pretty upset. Beside of that, and that's I, I think it's uh, well, it's funny to, to tell you this. When I went to the wild horses, the first horse I met was a dead horse. <laughs> a completely dead horse. There was nothing inside. There was only a carcass and, and skin around him. It impressed me. It definitely impressed me. But it, on the other hand, it was very good confrontation. I mean, that's... You can see now that you saw this mare, just a facial expression towards the other one, get out. And she walks away. Anyway, but it was a very good confrontation because, yes, Nicole, you're now in the world of the wild horses and, and, and these things happen. Anyway, the alpha mare doesn't exist. And <laughs> what we see in domesticated situations, and I think it's very plausible to, to tell you this, um, I'm not a scientist, but I'm, I'm, I'm a student. Um, I will be a student all my life, but a part of that. What you will see is, uh, what I noticed is that, that different breeds behave different. And I also know and I read about cultures, that horses, um, it depends on where they live and that there are also different, more or less, cultures. That means in, in language and the way they deal with each other. And that's what I noticed too. I, I, my life, uh, as far as I know, when I see ponies, I think they're more smart and I think they're more close to nature, uh, which makes sense because that's the normal size. And um, the taller they get, they somehow lose some of their horse skills. But that's my theory. That's a thinking. I have to be very clear in that. And, but, but to be true, I felt a little bit sorry for um, yeah, my, the scientists I met. They all said the same. They all, they all told me that for the last 15 or 20 years, people were looking at wild horses, waiting, waiting. Well, you can see nothing is happening, more or less. Waiting and waiting to see this alpha mare and this stallion. This stallion who was, uh, according to the books, um, responsible for the speed of the herd. There is no stallion, and I saw a different different times, several times that the mares were going somewhere, and the stallion was catching up or just just looking. And it also makes sense because the mares have to eat more, they have to drink more, they have to be more um, because they have fools. They have to be more aware of themselves. So 
that's why I call it Peter Pan horsemanship. I mean, there are many, many stories. And another thing, and which I thought was also interesting, is the difference in breeds. I mean, Icelandic horses who live in the cold places behave different compared to Arabian horses. And I think um, the Piri or the Andalusian, as people call them, also live different. Like these Retuertas, these horses also live different. To me, and my professor um, said, well, you can't say that. And, and what, what is it based on? Uh, to me, I, my impression of these horses were that they're not so smart. And when I talked to one of the rangers uh, in one evening, he said, well, people like these horses because they're easy to train. And you can go to the left and to the right, to the left, to the right, without them complaining. Well, that's something that not all horse breeds can do. Anyway, so I thought it was a very interesting story to share here on, on YouTube. And I do hope it's interesting enough. I thought it was very, very interesting, this uh, observation. Anyway, so this is observing wild horses. You don't see anything, only see a group of horses standing, eating, uh, well, resting uh, like like they do at this moment, except for the foal who is very persistent. Uh, he wants to drink with his mother. And this is the wild horses. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope, hope you like it.